I'm a more casual fan of the original Mirage comics Ninja Turtles. In fact, I've only read the part that Eastman and Laird worked on indirectly, and I've only done it in the Ultimate Collection paperbacks, not even the hardcovers. But I have collected quite a few of the NECA figures from those comics, so let's talk about them today. It's Morphin Time! Hello, this is Sanit here, and today we're talking about the NECA Ninja Turtles Mirage Comics line. Now, this is not uh, going to be a history video or an overview of every single figure. We're just going to talk about the ones I have, because I got the Turtle 4-pack, Splinter, and Shredder recently, and thought, hey, I want to do a video on these. I love these figures, and I want to talk about why, and maybe do some comparisons to the way they look in the comics as opposed to the way they look in the figures, because a lot of these are pretty spot on. So this is going to be kind of a more casual video than a full review or retrospective kind of thing. And I'm not covering the entire history. NECA's been doing Mirage stuff on and off since like 2008. We're really starting with a like newer line that started last year with Fugitoid because that's the part I've been collecting. But yeah, I'm going to talk about all these figures and kind of give you an overview of what I like about them, what I don't, and also like how good do they look compared to their comic counterpart because that means a lot to me. So let's take a look at the NECA Mirage TMNT line. Alright, so the first one of this new line is the Fugitoid. Fugitoid, uh, a lot of people may know from several of the cartoons, 2003 series, the uh, 2012 series used him a lot. He is quite a common uh, ally of the Turtles in the actual different uh, series. And the reason why is because he started back in the Mirage days. Now, the Fugitoid was a scientist who was turned into a robot, essentially and he was always dealing with the Triceratons. So if you had a Triceraton storyline, you probably had a Fugitoid. He actually debuted in his own separate one-shot before appearing in the Ninja Turtles comics, so he has kind of a different legacy there as well. He is one of those crazy Eastman and Laird sort of uh, creations. So it's kind of nice that he was the first released in the line. What's really cool, too, is the way that these are packed. You see you got like this street scene diorama background here. Uh, you see number one. There's the art of the Fugitoid. I believe the art on the packaging is new by Kevin Eastman, which is pretty cool. Now on the back, this is slightly frustrating, or at least it was, because I kept showing the old NECA Turtles from 2008 back here, uh, based on the early Mirage art style, and uh, it just was kind of frustrating to see this and have no way of getting any Turtles, but we did get that remedied later. And it also shows, like, some of the other figures. So I like the packaging. Um, it's also, like, packaging I don't want to get rid of because of that Kevin Eastman art on it. But looking at the figure, I mean, he's pretty spot on to how he looked in the original comic. Uh, you can see just the way that they've done the shading and the paint. The original comics, of course, were black and white, but this would match what his colors would be in some of the colorized uh, versions. You know, this all-silver kind of dude. Um, going back to the actual comic art uh, for a comparison... We can actually, uh, let's, see, let's see if we can do this. I'm, try I'm trying hard here to, uh, to illustrate how great and spot on the actual figures look. Because you can see he looks really spot on to that original comic art of Fugitoid, especially in his first issue of Turtles, which was uh, issue 5. Now we'll get the bookmark out of the way. You can see he's got that sort of general expression that he had in the book, uh, no matter what panel you're looking at, which is pretty awesome, I gotta say. Um, that's the nice part about these two is that they look, for the most part, I look at them like that is definitely Mirage uh, era Fugitoid. The other cool part of this figure is that unlike some other Fugitoid figures, uh, which, you know, they've redesigned him to have, you know, proper limbs. This guy, he's got 360 shoulders. Yeah, he's got wrist swivels. Yeah, he's got an upper torso ball joint that moves around and he's got like a neck joint and then hips that move uh, forward and back. They could go 360 if you want. These are also on a sort of a bendy wire system. So you can actually pose his arm in uh, different weird ways, same with the legs. So you actually get some posability out of them. That's not just, um, you know, they're not putting joints in there. They put bendy wires so that way you get the proper comic look without going too crazy. Now, what's also kind of neat is that you do get some different weapons for him. Here's a couple of Triceraton guns that he lifted. Um, I don't remember if he ever went, you know, Anyways, I started blasting mode with those, but, you know, I kind of have him decked out with that. He's got this rifle thing, which uh, is more for the turtles to use. Uh, same with this gauntlet. Like, he could wear the gauntlet, but we saw the gauntlet being used by Donatello in the comics. So I'm actually going to try this out on the other uh, turtles later. We've also got uh, just, like, I don't know, weird futuristic sci-fi, like, cuffs. 
Like, the idea is that he got handcuffed and, like, his arms bolted in. I'm not exactly sure how to attach this to the figure. There's no real guide, and I haven't been able to figure it out, but that's kind of neat. And then here is a, another Triceraton-like weapon that the turtles could use. And then he's got a couple extra hands for different posing options, some kind of relaxed, splayed-out hands, and then the grip hands. So overall, I mean, he's like a really cool figure, and just in general, it's neat to have a Fugitoid looking this comic-y and this cool. Because uh, it's, nice, it's a nice throwback, but it's also nice uh, to have a Fugitoid that looks proper and accurate. So next up we have Renat. Now Renat is a time traveler in training. She did debut in the Mirage uh, comics, of course, and then she appeared later in the uh, 2012 series. I know, I think she was in the 2003, um, but she is a time traveler. You can see uh, she's number two in the series. Different uh, box art pieces by Kevin Eastman, which is pretty cool. Uh, the unfortunate part of this figure is there is like debate on her color scheme, simply because, as you can see, she's got red cape, red hood and helmet, and a brown bodysuit. Uh, this doesn't exactly match up to what was what we think was originally intended to be the colors. Because we go back to uh, issue eight, where she debuted in the Turtles books, um, you can see that the cover, because uh, the covers were done in color, even though the book was in black and white, she is wearing all blue. And so that seems to be like the intended color scheme. Uh, unfortunately, the regular retail one is this red and brown, which actually matches the IDW Color Classics reprints. So maybe, and also, you know, Kevin Eastman did do art on this. Maybe that was the intended colors, and this was a coloring mistake back then. But for a lot of people, especially because she appears in animated shows in the blue, you wanted her in blue. Unfortunately, the blue version was released, but only exclusive to Walmart through some weird system where you bought it at a Walmart and then they ship it to you later kind of thing. It's um, not, not what I really uh, enjoyed. So I just have the red one. Um, but you can see that, you know, comparing her design in the book here in the actual black and white, it matches up pretty good. Um, I, I'd say it's a pretty good translation of the character to action figure form, which I think is important to have. And also because it is, uh, you know, a black and white comic, do colors bother me that much? Ultimately, no, because I just didn't want to go through the hassle for the Walmart one. Uh, but as you can see, you know, here she is. I do, I do think that, you know, it should have been reversed. I think the red one should have been exclusive to Walmart or Target or whatever if color coding is a thing and the blue one should have been retail since that's like, you know, the original colors and whatnot. We're splitting hairs at this point. It's a black and white comic. You know, find the version that matches your taste. For me, this is fine. Uh, she's got her time staff. Uh, she's got a pretty good uh, body mold overall. I had to get a replacement on this one because the actual pins in her arms, like they finally gave uh, female character double joint elbows in the NECA Turtles line, but then the pins were misfired and so her arms are super gummy. Kind of, you know, NECA QC stuff. Her cape is really nice. It's a double layered cloth cape with a wire, which is pretty cool. And then what's really neat is that her helmet is removable. And this is like not something that's a huge deal because it's going to make it easier to like swap her head because you just come with an alternate head. But having the helmet removable means you can kind of get it like off center because she is not like a great time traveler. She's like in training, not really good at the whole thing. So if you have her like helmet kind of crooked as she's like falling through a portal because she's not exactly sure what she's doing, that of course, uh, you know, look at me, once again, finding comic reasons for things. There, there, There's a shot there of her helmet being all crooked so uh, she does come with some other cool stuff uh, you get this little scroll this is a time scroll i believe um, if i'm remembering correctly so you got that and then you've got uh, a knife as well that she used i just lost the time scroll she does come with an unmasked head uh, she is portrayed blonde here which i believe is accurate i don't think there was a problem with the hair color and then there's a little hood uh downed hood so you can put this like over her neck so that way it looks like she's pulled the hood back and then she comes with uh, lord simultaneous I would have liked to stand for this, but uh, Lord Simultaneous, for those that are unaware, is essentially her boss. Uh, he screams at her from across time when she screws things up. So you can see there, there he is in the comic. Here he is in toy form. Giant, angry, screaming head. I would have liked a stand to put this on so you could have yelled it, you know, from any distance. But yeah, he really has that one expression in the book. And yeah, it definitely matches up to the, uh, the actual toy here. So Renat's pretty cool. I don't mind the colors. I've grown accustomed to them even. Uh, she's nice to have a figure of because I don't think we get many figures of her. I don't actually remember off the top of my head of any other Renat figures besides this one. So correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but it's pretty cool to have this character. So here we have the Utrom, which is actually, I think, my favorite uh, single figure from the whole line. 
Uh, before we look at him, quick look at the box. He's got, you know, his little brain dude, the uh, little robot there, and then, of course, the full Utrom body. Uh, looking pretty cool. Now, the Utroms are uh, not, you know, most, I think, a lot of people that watch the 80s cartoon remember Krang. Krang was an Utrom, but they didn't really go into the Utroms as a racer species. There was essentially just the one guy, but essentially these little brain aliens that need exosuit bodies to uh, walk around and move. It started with the Mirage comics as a race of beings called the Utroms, and for whatever reason, the cartoon did simplify it down to Krang. In the 2012 series, they brought back the Utroms as the Krang, like the Krang was the species, uh, which I thought was a kind of a cool merger. The 2003 series was heavily based on the Mirage comics and had the Utroms as the Utroms. So, you know, if you've seen the 2003 series, it's going to be, you know, kind of in line with that. Now, what's really cool is just the way that this guy looks. I love all the techie detail, the paint wash to make him look shiny. Like, he looks shiny without any, like, actual reflective paint, which is really cool. So he's still got kind of like that matte comic look, but he has the shine to him, which I think is just amazing. It's a great design. It's a great look. I love having this as a figure. He just looks so cool. Uh, and then, of course, you know, since we've been doing, let's just compare it straight up to the comic page. Uh, this was issue, like, five, I think. It was, like, issue four or five. We're, like, we're already doing Utroms in issue four. It was kind of blew my mind when I was reading through the Mirage stuff and going, oh, hey, we're already at Utroms. So the 2003 series was taking it slow uh, when they introduced those in season one. But you can see, yeah, or uh, season two, I mean, it's really cool to see, you know, this Utrom design just really well replicated as a figure form. Like that is just, you know, mind's eye mental image of the Utroms from the original comic definitely matches what the figure is. And then to go alongside it, he's got this uh, partially smashed head, which has just got wires and stuff exposed and an eye sticking out, which is really cool. And then the uh, thing comes with like the little thing for the Utrom to drink and a couple tools and some extra hands. This is probably, I I'd say, yeah, this is definitely my favorite single figure still, even though it was like the third one and there's more sense, even over the Triceratron. I just, I love this design and it's something we don't get very often in uh, Turtles lines is like an actual Utrom robot like this. Alright, so the fourth figure is Casey Jones. Uh, this is, it's interesting because this line was like, yeah, let's just do all the characters we didn't do before. But Casey's like, I think, our first high profile character. Uh, the other three are more obscure, so I think it's really cool. Casey Jones, my all time favorite Ninja Turtles uh, character, like just straight up. He's not my favorite, like, like the Utrom. Because uh, the Utrom, I'm like, that's spot on perfect. Casey, I think, is a little bit thin. Um, I mean, he's very thin from the side. Like, you see there's, like, you know, no torso mass. This is very common because uh, Shredder is built just like this. But with Casey, I think his arms are a little small, his torso is a little small, his legs are a little small. Uh, if you look at uh, the way that Eastman's drawn him on the box, uh, you know, head's pretty spot on. But you can see he's got a lot more, like, muscle tone to him. Uh, especially here, like in the legs and the arms. Um, this is also the case with the comic, because of course, I'm just going to keep doing this. This is kind of the fun part of this video, is just going, hey, let's look up the uh, artwork from his debut in the Raphael one-shot. So you can see there, uh, you can see he's a little bit more uh, muscly than here. Um, I don't think he's like super bulky in a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, there he is again. I know he's in like leaping poses all the time, but... You can kind of see he's a little bit more uh, beefed up than this guy. And then later on, when uh, Casey reappeared uh, during the uh, the City at War storyline, or, or the part before the City at War, I don't know what to call that, the um, Let's Leave New York arc, uh, you can kind of see here, this is, I think, one of the more famous images of Casey Jones from this era. You can see he's not as bulky as he was in that initial issue. Um, he did lean out a little bit, uh, just art-wise. And so the figure is closer resembling that, I think. Um, also, early, uh, at least early color versions of Casey in Mirage had him with a red shirt, which we'll probably see as a variant, but I don't mind the gray. I think the gray actually sort of uh, fits the color palettes of Mirage. And you can see my camera's having trouble focusing because of that gray, but there we are. So, I mean, he looks pretty good. I think the, like I said, the arms are a little bit small, but other than that, he's pretty spot on. I like that he's got... Of course, the different weapons, two baseball bats, um, the golf club, hockey stick. Uh, you know, that's, that's pretty good because I think that's a good, you know, assortment. He also does come with an unmasked head, which I think is very, very early Eastman Laird, uh, Casey Jones stuff there. Very gritted teeth. 
He also comes with an unmasked uh, mask. Uh, it's pretty soft and pliable, actually, which is uh, weird. But yeah, you can have him carry that while unmasked, which is pretty cool. But I'm going to leave him with the mask on, because I think that just invokes Casey Jones so well. Um, pretty cool figure. I, I'd say, you know, if he was a little bit more comic accurate proportion-wise, he's just a little bit beefier, I think uh, I'd probably enjoy him more than the Fugitoid. Um, but I think overall, it's still a good uh, Mirage Casey Jones. Watch out for Shredder! So I don't have number five, which is the Shredder clones, because I didn't get the Loot Crate Shredder clone guy, so I just skipped it entirely. But number six is the Battle Damage Shredder, which came out after number seven, the Triceraton. But the uh, Battle Damage Shredder, uh, just got him recently at Target. Uh, wasn't even formally announced, I think, to be released. But uh, overall, you know, this is based on the Loot Crate Shredder, which had um, just a normal look to him. This is a battle damage look. They've re-sculpted the chest to have scars, scratches in the legs, and tears there. But I think it still works really well as a Mirage Setter. Now, you can notice the blue color. Um, you know, this is, first of all, here's the box art uh, looking pretty cool. I do like uh, this piece of art especially. Uh, now, this isn't a Renat situation, I don't think. Um, the blue color is, I think, supposed to represent the early Shredder in the first issue. Because later on, Shredder... Uh, was sporting these uh, reds and silvers like this. Uh, this would be the common colors, and I think the uh, New York Comic Con box set they did of Shredder and his goons uh, was was in those colors. But they went with this blue color, which I think is nice. Um, in the first issue, uh, minor spoilers for an almost 30-year-old comic. Uh, sorry, almost 40-year-old comic. I keep forgetting the 80s were that long ago. Um, this uh, Shredder <laughs> essentially got killed by the Turtles in the first issue, this was just a one-off, one-shot idea Eastman and Laird had. Um, but you can see they did a really good job replicating these scars in the chest. Uh, let me move his arm out of the way here. Uh, you can see the scarring in the chest there compared to how it was in the actual comics. So the two scratches across, pretty good. And then uh, later on in the book, uh, they, they, break his, they break his helmet off. So you can see his head there. Um, and then, of course, we do get an unmasked head where he is uh, shrieking and bleeding. I think they nailed that expression so perfectly. It's kind of amazing. I'm actually pretty impressed by that. Uh, and then also he has the thermite grenade because he's like, well, if I can't beat you, I'm just gonna blow you up kind of thing. So he comes with that as well. So this is very much a first issue uh, shredder versus any other shredder. And there he is and he goes and he blows up and they're like, oh, I guess it's all that's left um, of the shredder or in, uh, in Leo's words, hmm, it seems that the Shredder has been shredded. And then you get the little gauntlet of, like, his remains. He comes back later. Uh, I won't spoil how, but uh, if you ever read the Mirage comics. Um, the one thing I do want to point on this figure, um, if you notice I've had him on his stand, he doesn't stand well on his own, like in an action pose. He just, like, tip forward. Um, there he's a little bit more stable. I, I bought packs of these NECA clear stands because just... In general, I don't want the NECA figures falling over. They do feel more fragile than other action figures. Um, but the part I do like is that when you go to swap his head, unlike Casey Jones and Renat, where you have to kind of like line it up on the top of the ball joint, the whole neck comes out, which is really nice and easy to swap this in and out. And I kind of like this straight peg. Then you have like a tilt up and down, but then still the ball joint on the top of the neck. I wish more figures did that, but that's actually pretty cool. Uh, but then you can see uh, Shredder with the unmasked head. So, pretty cool. Uh, I like the battle damage. I thought maybe, you know, oh, I just kind of want like a regular Shredder. No, nah, I, I like this very specific first issue Shredder. Because uh, I think it's an iconic moment that's sort of unique to the Mirage comics. So here's my second favorite figure of the line, the Triceraton Zog. So I did actually a whole YouTube short because of how much I love this guy. Uh, he is by far the largest single figure so far. Um, I'm just going to show his box real quick. Uh, it's got some really nice uh, Eastman art on it. Let's get it out of the way because we need to look at this guy. He is so cool. He's huge. He's chunky. Uh, the tail, uh, you know, isn't even needed for his balance. Like, he's, he's pretty solid. Um, Zog was the Triceraton they uh, worked with during the uh, Return to New York slash City at War stuff. I uh, see he's got his blaster, his knife, you know, very iconic things to the character, especially like the ripped sleeve part here uh, from his uniform, because he's been through some stuff. He's rebelling against the Empire, uh, which is pretty cool. So Zog is pretty neat. I think we've actually seen him in a few cartoons. Um, I'm trying to keep all my info straight. Let's just focus on comics. Uh, so Zog, of course, uh, when he showed up 
in the Return to New York arc. Uh, we can see, boom, there is Zog. Uh, it's kind of, you know, very detailed um, pencils here, but uh, coming down to uh, Zog here, where he's a little bit more inked, a little bit more saturated, you can see how spot on the figure is, especially with the open mouth. Uh, Triceratons as a concept is just cool because they're giant, like, dinosaur people, um, and they all have names starting with the letter Z, but Zog is just so cool. Uh, maybe we'll see some other Triceratons in the Mirage style, but if we only get Zog, I'm pretty happy with him because he is, like, you know, named character, uh, which is pretty awesome to have. So Zog, definitely a winner of a figure, and definitely a foreshadowing with him being a return to New York figure as opposed to an early Mirage figure. So number eight is Splinter. Uh, Splinter has never been made by NECA for Mirage before. I can see some really nice artwork there with him. Uh, he is tiny. He is very small, but this is accurate to his size and scaling in the actual comic. I think he turned out nice. I like the cloth robe. I'm not going to remove it in any way because I don't want to mess with it, but it's got nice... Um, so it's, uh, it's different than the cartoon one, which was kind of a flatter cloth. This is a nice uh, stitched, layered kind of uh, fabric going on, which is really cool. He's got, of course, got his cane. I uh, love the head sculpt. You got the two teeth down there, the white eyes. Very reminiscent of the original uh, vintage toy, too, because that was based on the comics. Now, the fun part with this guy, um, first of all, here's his little uh, comparison. Almost got carried away here. Um, but you can see sort of, you know, his relative scale to the turtles. Like, he is... He is that much shorter than the turtles, uh, and we'll do a little other comparison when we get the turtles out here. Um, but the thing that's really cool about this guy is because he is smaller, he's still the normal like price, which is I think like thirty-eight bucks. So he comes with an utrom. Um, I forget which utrom this is supposed to be, but it's one that's pointing. It is bigger than what the utrom robot body will fit, so it's not like you can swap them out. But it kind of works as like a standalone utrom. You get a teapot and a little cup for tea, which is uh, which is pretty cool. I think that's neat. I haven't really gotten to hold the teacup very well, but he's got that. He comes with a mouser, uh, which is great. Uh, the mouser design has basically never changed since the beginning. Um, I don't even need to bring up comic cards. This is literally how they look. Uh, they have used the same exact design in like every incarnation of the mouser. Um, this is the thing that Baxter Stockman made to eat rats and it went after Splinter. Um, this is actually a pretty articulated mouser because it's got two... Uh, joints, one at the bottom of the neck and the one at the top that allows it to pivot. Mouth opens, does all this. I think this is the same as the Comic-Con Mouser pack that was released. Uh, then you get a little diorama scene. Um, <laughs> this is just adorable. You get all four baby turtles and the ooze, the mutagen ooze with the TCRI container. Um, I love this because it actually looks dynamic and you can have like the turtles like, oh, getting all oozed up. And then eventually they will grow up into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that we love. But I love that he comes with all four. Um, a lot of, I mean, like the um, the movie turtles, if you wanted the baby versions of them, you had to get in an accessory pack. With uh, Super 7, they only included like one baby turtle, I think, with Splinter. So it was nice to see all four baby turtles. And then if this wasn't enough, you get a uh, little Kung Fu rat uh, himself. It is a Splinter when he was a rat, because uh, uh, different versions do different interpretations. Sometimes he's a guy that turns into a rat. Sometimes he's a rat that turns into a guy. In this case, he's a rat that turns into a guy. And of course, I have a direct comic panel influence here. Um, so we can see Rat Splinter learning from his master, Hamato Yoshi. Uh, and then, of course, we've got uh, the little little guy here in that in the exact, almost exact same pose, uh, which is really, really cool. So it's just really neat. Um, I think this figure is, you know, not only is it a great looking Splinter, he can stand on his own. I think he's actually probably one of my favorite uh, Splinter figures. But the fact that he comes with all this other stuff just makes him, like, more of a well-rounded package. He's kind of like Splinter Plus Accessory Pack, which is really, really cool. Alright, so here's our big finale, the four turtles themselves. Now, this is a new box set that uh, it's starting to pop up at Target. Hopefully, it'll be available everywhere like a lot of the Mirage stuff is. This is the turtle box set based on Return to New York slash City at War. This is, I think, the shift in art style that did happen sort of as Peter uh, Laird and Kevin Eastman got busier with Turtle stuff outside of the comics. They shifted off of being artists and just doing story stuff for issues, and they had other artists and writers come in. So the thing is, when they did the Return to New York, they had Jim Lawson doing most of the pencils for the books. So 
you actually have a shift in art style. And also, in general, the turtles were starting to shift away from how they appeared in the first issue. So what I mean by this is if you go back and you look at your first issue of Ninja Turtles, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you can see they have these kind of shorter, stockier, really kind of weirdly proportioned. Every time you see someone make uh, toys based on Mirage Ninja Turtles, it's always based on this first issue. And I get it. It's iconic. It's cool. NECA even did this in 2008. I wanted something more like this, uh, more based on a later era, because ultimately more of the comics, they look more like this. Uh, in fact, if we uh, go into specifics here, I think they look like this, uh, this page right here. Uh, one of the early Jim Lawson uh, penciled issues that uh, Eastman and Laird worked on. This is in Return to New York. They look very similar to that, and so I like seeing that sort of design. I like these a lot better than the other uh, Mirage Turtles. They may not be the case for everybody, but I really, really like these and prefer these as my comic turtles, specifically for the Mirage comics. Now, the uh, fun part is that they are sold as a box set. It's 150 bucks, so you know it's the same price as buying them individually. It's just they're bundled together. I love that. I don't like buying turtles singly. I don't buy one turtle. I buy all four. I buy none. And so, you know, I'm glad this isn't two packs or singles. I can just get this all at once. Works for me. Uh, I think before we get to the figures, I do want to look at the box. I'm going to pull them out of the, the way here so we can see this. Um, we have a great piece in the back, uh, which is the turtles looking out um, over the barge and uh, Shredder's helmet right there. Um, you know, that's a scene from the comic uh, for sure. This front box is also a scene from City at War specifically. Uh, you got the Shredder mutant clones, which has already been released, Foot Ninjas, Shredder, that kind of thing. I don't know if this is a, uh, no, this is new because uh, it does say Eastman uh, 23. So this is Eastman's uh, new art for this set, which is great. And then on the back here, there's a problem. Uh, they actually mixed up uh, Raphael and Michelangelo in the promo shots. Uh, it's really easy to do. Like, a lot of fans are like, oh, which turtle's which? Well, Leo's got the double straps there and Donatello's got a holster, but Raph and Mikey could look the same, but they're actually flipped. So it shows uh, Raph as being the one with the sort of uh, grimmest smile, uh, which is not. This is this is actually Michelangelo. Now, these heads are universal, so you could swap them to any figure. But you see, they, they show as Raph with the less scarred torso, um, whereas Raph is actually the uh, scratched up scarred torso and the more angry looking head. Um, so you can see that that is actually Raph over here, which is holding the nunchucks. So... The thing is, is that if you're like, oh, this is just Sandout's opinion that Raph is more scratched up, it's not. Because in order to identify the turtles, there is a quick, simple method called pop the head off the, off the body here. So you pop the head off, you can see that the uh, interior of the head has an M for Michelangelo. So this is the Michelangelo head and the Michelangelo body. So yeah, that is something that they kind of screwed up in the promotional stuff and on the box. So if you get them you're going to have the size packed near this guy and the nunchucks packed near this guy. So if you get them, swap them, because uh, this is how they're supposed to be. And like I said, the heads heads don't lie. They sculpt them, and I think these match the, the character personalities a lot better. Uh, the other cool thing is that you do get an alternate arm uh, specifically for Raph, which is a bandaged arm because he did get injured. Uh, he was the first one to go back to New York when they went from the, the you know upstate cottage to New York City again. Raph did get injured. Um, there is an alternate regular arm as well. I guess, no, this is the alternate arm for the bandage. It comes packaged with the regular. But I like that option. You know, quick and simple. You can put that on any of the turtles even. Uh, I like the way the sides are done here. Another accessory that's RAF specific is uh, if you want to recreate the first issue of Return to New York. In fact, even the cover. Uh, we can just stick a side in his belt like this. And then we're going to give him this, uh, this hood accessory. Which is... This is, again, very specific, but when... Um, so we'll squeeze that on his head there. When City at War started in the comics, uh, you know, it started with Return to New York, and so you've got Raph there sleeping. So there he is, Raph sleeping in the comic. There is Raph with the hood in the figure. Even the expression matches, which is pretty neat. And he actually did fight with this uh, as the issue went along here. Um, he did have that on his head, and eventually he took it off, but... Pretty cool stuff. I gotta say, it is neat to see like those very uh, issue-specific accessories. Now, all four turtles share a mold, but it's a pretty good mold. Um, you can see, we'll look at Michelangelo again. 
Uh, what's really cool about this is that there is like a double uh, barreled, uh, what is it, dumbbell joint in the head, the top of the neck and the bottom. So you get a good, good amount of range there. Uh, the other good part is that they have a universal hand system. So they do include a bunch of extra hands, but not necessarily a full splay for each turtle. So you just swap them around as needed. Uh, they also have this really cool joint system here where they actually do have a waist turn. I'm glad to see that like everybody's sort of improving on the turtle action figure design. Like I think each company that's done a new turtle mold has come up with something new. NECA's got this thing where it slightly tilts back and forth, but it actually is a double, um, it is a double like a uh, barbell hinge. So you can actually slide it back and forth a little bit. That means you can get some more dynamic poses with your turtles. I also like the use of uh, just like kind of string, not really string, but kind of like a rope texture for Michelangelo's nunchucks, because I think that works better than having like plastic ones that just kind of get in the way, or, you know, he doesn't have chains because it's definitely a look. I like it better than the wires they used for the Secret of the Ooze Michelangelo. Uh, then coming around to Donatello, uh, Donatello's got a more serious face on him. At this point in time, they still had the tails. Uh, this was an early Mirage thing. They still had the tails, but the tails were definitely reduced in size a whole lot. So I'm glad to see that they include the tails. But they're, uh, you know, they're kind of more hidden from the front, which I think was the intention. Um, adding to that, you know, Donatello, of course, does have a holster. You can stuff Michelangelo's nunchucks in his belt. You can put Raph's stuff in his belt. Donnie does have specifically a spot to store his uh, bow staff. Um, speaking of accessories, this was from the Fugitoid. It was designed for the other uh, Donatello. I was going to see if it just kind of would fit on. I think it's just too big for his hand. Uh, let's see if I pull the hand off. Will it fit on his arm? Can I like... Nah, it's too big. Yeah, so this is kind of a bummer because this accessory would have been perfect for Donatello to wear. But um, yeah, the arms on the new ones are too big. It would fit the old uh, lankier turtles. But these new ones, not so much. So that, that's a little bit of a bummer. But Donatello, pretty good. And then of course here we have Leo, uh, leader of the group. Like his swords, they got a good length to them. Uh, just like Donnie, he's got actual sheaths so you can actually put them in. Um, these work pretty well. Uh, they're not going to get warped either because uh, this is one really solid piece of plastic. So as long as it's not warped out of the box, it's going to be fine. Looking pretty good. Um, overall, I mean, I'm pretty happy with the uh, the turtles. I can't really complain about any of them. Um, the last accessory is they all come with uh, straight bandanas. So if you want this, um, you know, instead of instead of these bandanas that are sticking, you know, dramatically, if you want them just laying flat, straight down, you have that option. I personally like the more dynamic ones. But yeah, I mean, this turtle set, it's pretty great. I think the price value is pretty good. Uh, you are getting four of the same mold, but it is the turtles, so that kind of is appropriate. But I like the way they look. I like the way that they're accurate to the comic. I like the accessories they come with. And in general, yeah, if you can get your hands on the set and you want some Mirage turtles, totally recommended. Here's a quick uh, size comparison with some Donatello's. Uh, here's the Mirage, the NECA cartoon, the Super 7 Ultimate and the NECA Secret of the Ooze Donatello. So you can see, you know, this one kind of fits in line with all the others. Uh, he's a little bit taller than the cartoon, uh, about the same height as Super 7, a little shorter than the movie. So this isn't all the NECA Mirage team and T figures, but it's all the ones I have, and I really do like them. Like I said, I'm a more casual Mirage guy. Like, I haven't read every issue, but I read all the Eastman and Laird stuff specifically, and I'm just going to pick up figures that I like from that run. And overall, I mean, I picked up a pretty good amount of figures so far. So we'll see what else is on the horizon. I don't think anything else is, like, too exciting. I don't usually collect Foot Ninja that often, so I don't, you know, want any of that. But honestly, this line is a lot of fun for comic readers and comic fans. And I like the availability since most of these are available at general retail without too much hassle, which is an opposite of a lot of the NECA Ninja Turtle stuff. But in general, I think they're great, and that was what this kind of video was about. So if you enjoyed this, hit the like button, hit the comments, and let me know what you thought of this style of video. Just kind of this more casual, let's just talk about a figure as opposed to like, let me review every single possible detail and articulation and accessory. Like just kind of a general overview, sort of talk about it, show some comic panels, that sort of thing. Let me know if you like that. Also subscribe to the notification bell for more videos on the channel. Check out my live streams Mondays at 5 p.m. Eastern for all kinds of talk about toy news, entertainment news, all kinds of good stuff. Also be sure to find me on social media at Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok as long as those are still applicable at SoundOut12. You can find my awesome graphic designer on Twitter at DarkClaw643. And you can find Hero Club at HeroDodgeClub.com for comic news and more. And until next time, this is SoundOut saying goodbye.